There are some patients who lose their meniscus who subsequently develop pain in the involved compartment of the knee. The meniscus, as you know, is a C-shaped cartilage that serves as a gasket or buffer between the femur and the tibia. When it's removed, some patients will actually develop pain over time. Some actually might develop arthritis as time goes on. There's a couple important points. There are probably 300 to 500,000 meniscal surgeries performed each year. And most of those patients do beautifully and never develop subsequent symptoms. It is just a subset of people who lose their meniscus who go on to develop pain. Some will develop pain in the absence of arthritis or loss of cartilage, and others will develop pain when arthritis ensues. Depending upon the timing and onset of the presentation, patients in this category might be amenable to a procedure called a meniscus transplant. We perform human donated meniscal transplants in patients who are missing their meniscus, who develop symptoms that are typically associated with activities. They may also have associated or concomitant problems like cartilage loss or malalignment or even a ligament disruption. A meniscus transplant is a procedure whereby a donor, typically a donor who donates their heart, liver, lungs, but also their cartilage, provides a size matched meniscus that can be placed into the knee arthroscopically through a minimally invasive outpatient procedure. Patients will not have to be on any anti-rejection medications or other because the body doesn't see that meniscus tissue as foreign. Patients who undergo meniscal transplantation will also be evaluated for associated problems such as cartilage loss. All of this would be discussed in the office setting. Success rates following meniscal transplantation, including return to sport, are as high as 75 to 85%. What's critical to understand is that we don't replace the meniscus to prevent progression. We replace the meniscus because patients have pain and associated dysfunction today. We will also let those patients return to sport. But once they get that meniscal transplant, they are indeed at risk of tearing that transplanted tissue. Even more important is that the meniscal tissue will only likely stay in place for a maximum of 10 to 12 years and oftentimes it's less than that. So because putting that meniscus back in a patient is associated with the potential to re-tear it and has not definitively been shown to prevent the progression of arthritis, the number one indication is to treat a patient who has symptoms today and not consider this as a prophylactic or preventative procedure. Recovery times following these procedures are in the neighborhood of six to eight months. Postoperatively, patients typically will have to use crutches and a brace and sometimes even a passive motion machine to restore early range of motion and provide nutrition to the replaced cartilage. If you want to learn more about the specific rehabilitation protocols, please go to my website, briancolemd.com. These are some of the discussion points that I'll highlight with you in the office as we discuss the proper indications for meniscus transplantation. The best orthopedic care starts with the best orthopedic research. I am a proud faculty member in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at Rush University, home to the Midwest's largest team of bone and joint scientists. With surgeons and clinicians partnering with elite laboratory researchers and data scientists, we continue to devise new solutions that push the boundaries of what's possible in the treatment of musculoskeletal conditions. Our work informs orthopedic care around the world and is fueled by donors, patients, and families who believe in our research to help more people lead active lives free of pain. To learn more about opportunities to participate in research or become a supporter, please ask a member of my team or visit our website at this address.